Hello, in this video we're going to look at optimal commodity taxation. We have two markets, good X and good Y. Good X is characterized by the following demand equation. X is just units of good X, and we have the P subscript X, the price of good X. The supply curve is going to be perfectly elastic or horizontal at a price of $5. So the price in this market is currently $5. For good Y, we have a very similar setup, the demand for good Y. Uh, the supply curve, although in this case, is going to be perfectly elastic at $2, so the price of good Y is going to be $2. And here's our problem. The government wants to raise $8.01 in tax revenue by placing a per unit tax in these markets. What is the optimal tax in each market to minimize the deadweight loss of raising $8.01 of tax revenue? So let's start with the market for good X. Before the tax, as we said, the price is $5. And so the equilibrium quantity, plugging is $5 into the demand, consumers would buy five units. With the tax, uh, we're going to take the, the demand here. And because we have a perfectly elastic supply curve, consumers will be paying 100% of the tax. So with a tax, the consumers are going to pay the seller's P subscript X, and then they're going to pay the government this T subscript X. So simplifying a little bit, we know P subscript X is 5. And so just simplifying some more, 10 minus 5, this will be the equilibrium quantity after the tax. And the dead weight loss, just going to be, think of an area of a triangle, one half base times height. Uh, the height of the triangle is going to be the size of the tax. And the change in X is going to reflect the change in the equilibrium quantities before and after the tax has been implemented. So let's get the change in X. So the change in X is going to be the equilibrium quantity before the tax, which is 5, minus the equilibrium quantity after the tax, this x subscript t. So making a substitution in for x subscript t, which we found up here, is 5 minus the tax. This just simplifies very nicely down to the tax in the market for good x. So now just putting this t subscript x in for the change in x, We have an expression for the deadweight loss in the market for good X. Now let R equal government tax revenue. So in the market for good X, the government will collect the following tax revenue. It's going to be the tax in the market for good X times the number of units that are being purchased in the face of the tax. So making a substitution in for X subscript T, as we saw on the previous slide, at X subscript T is just 5 minus the tax. And just simplifying some more, we have an expression for government revenue in the market for good X. Now let's do this similar thing for the market for good Y before the tax. Supply is perfectly elastic at $2.00. That means consumers will purchase eight units for our equilibrium quantity. With the tax, given the perfectly elastic supply, consumers will be paying 100% of the tax. So we can calculate the quantity purchased with the tax as follows. And simplifying, we get this result. So this will be the equilibrium quantity after the tax. And the dead weight loss, same thing, uh, envision a area of a triangle in the supply and demand diagram. So one half base times height. You can think of the height as the tax, and the base is just going to be the change in the equilibrium brought about because of the tax. So the change in Y is going to be this uh, Y, which is 8 before the tax, minus the equilibrium quantity when we impose the tax. And that'll very nicely simplify down to the just the tax in the market for good Y. Making a substitution into this formula, change in Y is what? 
it's just a tax in the market for good Y. And we get this result for the dead weight loss in the market for good Y. Moving on. We'll get the revenue in the market for good Y, government tax revenue. So it's just the tax in the market for good Y times the number of units being taxed. We know that Y subscript T is just given by 8 minus the tax in that market. And simplifying, we have the following. Okay, now we can look at the optimal taxation by minimizing the sum of dead weight losses subject to the government constraint of raising $8.01 of tax revenue. So here is the government constraint, $8.01 of tax revenue uh, will equal the revenue coming from tax revenue coming from good acts and the tax revenue coming from the market for good Y. So we're going to do this by setting up a Lagrangian. We have the dead weight loss in the market for good X, the dead weight loss caused by the tax in the market for good Y, and subject to our constraint of raising $8.01 of tax revenue. So we're going to take three partial derivatives. We're going to take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the tax in the market for good X and set that partial derivative result equal to zero. So if you do that, you'll get this result right here. There we got this lambda here multiplied by minus five times the tax. So that'll just simplify down to minus five lambda. And then you got this lambda also going to be multiplied by this minus minus the tax squared in the market for good x. And that's where we have this two lambda, the tax in the market for good x. And a similar thing, we get the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the tax on good Y. Set their result equal to zero. And then lastly, we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to lambda, and we just get back what's in brackets, a constraint. So we have these uh, three equations and essentially three unknowns the lambda, the tax in the market for good X, the tax in the market for good Y. So the first thing I will do is I'll solve the first equation, first partial derivative result for lambda. And doing that, you'll get this. And then I'm going to solve equation B, the second partial derivative result for lambda. And then I'm going to set those two lambdas equal to one another and just simplify this. So kind of cross multiplying these uh, denominator terms and then solving for the tax in the market for good Y, we get this result. And now we're going to plug this result back into equation C. Here's our equation C. And where we have the T subscript Y, we're going to replace that with 1.6 times t subscript x. So making that substitution. And now simplifying. And simplifying some more. We have a quadratic equation. I'll skip the details of this solution. So uh, the tax in the market for good x uh, is going to be 50 cents. We're going to ignore the larger tax of 4.5. Uh, that would come at a much, much higher dead weight loss. Okay, we're trying to minimize the dead weight loss. We're going to pick the smaller number here. So the optimal tax in the market for good x is 50 cents per unit. And therefore, the optimal tax in the market for good y is going to be 1.6 times this 0.5 or 80 cents per unit. So let's look at what's going on after tax in each market. So consumers are going to pay $5.50 per unit. And as a result, consumers will buy only 4.5 units. Uh, the tax revenue that government collects in this market for good X is going to be $2.25. And now let's look at what's going on in the market for good Y. Uh, consumers are going to pay $2.80 a unit, $2 to the sellers, $0.80 cents each to the government, and 7.2 units will be purchased after taxes, and the government tax revenue 
coming from this market will be $5.76. So total tax revenue is indeed $8.01. Uh, now let's just check our answer by looking at the inverse elasticity rule, the Ramsey rule to minimize a dead weight loss from raising a fixed amount of government revenue, tells us that the tax rate of good X divided by the tax rate of good Y should equal the elasticity of demand for good Y divided by the elasticity of demand for good X. So starting with good X, so before taxes we had this situation, we can calculate the elasticity of demand using our formula here, and in the market for good X, elasticity of demand uh, is minus 1 before taxes. And the tax rate on this good is just going to be the tax divided by the $5. Now doing a similar thing for good Y, let's calculate the price elasticity of demand for good Y before taxes, and we get minus 0 0.25. And the tax rate for good Y is just going to be this 80 cents that we found earlier, divided by $2. So plugging all our information into this inverse elasticity rule, tax rate on good X is 10, 10%. Tax rate on good Y in the denominator is 40%. The elasticity of demand for good Y is minus 0 0.25. Elasticity of demand down here for good X is minus 1. And indeed, these things are equal. So we did find the optimal per unit tax in each market. Okay, that's it. Hope you found this video helpful.